the NCAA D1 Council is proposing a 30-day total transfer portal window as opposed to the current window that lasts 60 days total. This is a way to maybe narrow. The, so right now, as, I, as, as it goes, there's two transfer portal windows. The first is right at the end of the season into the all season. And then the second is right at the end of spring practice. This, this proposal is to narrow the transfer portal window. So you don't see much as much crazy movement going on. That would, that would hurt the athletes to a degree. It depends on how they do it. And what I mean by that is I do think that there should be a transfer portal window after spring practice and after right after the offseason. I think there should be a transfer portal window after both. And the reason there should be a transfer portal window after both is bo those are the two times you learn whether or not you're going to be a starter, whether or not you're going to play, and the athletes do deserve the chance to make that decision. Now, again, 30 days, I don't know how you do it. I, I think there's actually – I think there's three windows. I think there's one at the end of the all season, one at the end of spring practice, and then one into the, into the summer. I don't think you need one in the summer. I'm just going to be honest with you. I think that the window should. I, I, oh no, I'm sorry, guys. I got it wrong. I got it wrong. There is a 45 day transfer portal window, and then a 15 day transfer portal window after spring ball. Yeah, they should shorten the transfer portal window after the all season. They should. It should not be 45 days. I'm totally fine with you making it. 15 days. So it's 15 days after the fall, 15 days after the, after the, after the football season, 15 days after spring ball, that's plenty of time for an athlete to make a decision to see what they want to do. And I think that creates less chaos. A lot of this is about the work-life balance for coaches. Coaches are being, look, college football coaches are being overworked. I'm going to tell you guys that right now. And you can talk about the money they make and they make a lot of money and they are paid very well. And that might lessen the sympathy many of you guys have for them. But our guy over at Lake Kick, Josh, Josh Pate, had a great point. It doesn't matter how much money you make. The human body can only do so much. And college football coaches are being pushed beyond their limits with, their, with the work they have to do. Because they have to literally constantly recruit, constantly target transfers, Constantly make sure their roster stays together. I mean, this is the 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 open transfer portal window and the recruiting calendar is wrecking the work life balance of college football coaches. Dave has talked about this on the show, and it's a real problem. So I'm totally all for them shutting shortening the transfer portal window. I'm for them shutting down recruitment during the season, and I know that's crazy. I think I think during the season, I don't think I think the only contacts you should have are scheduling official visits with recruits. Quite honestly, I. I there's too much work going on for college football coaches right now that I don't think they can all do. They also have, a lot of people don't know this, they have 10 staff members, but they have the smallest staff per player of any sport. There are usually 100 players on a team. That's 10 players per coach. No other school, if you have, if any other sport, if you have four coaches, you have more players per, you have fewer players per coach than that. So, it's one of those where there needs to be a work-life balance when it comes to college football coaches. And otherwise, you're going to drive the best coaches out of the sport. You just are. You are. There are coaches who want to coach college football that literally they don't – they physically can't do what they have to do to keep their program afloat. It's it's getting crazy right now. And, again, look, there's a, thou there's a thousand other people that have – way more impossible situations with their regular lives and college football coaches. I get it. But this is something that needs to be addressed from the NCAA's perspective. Now, from the other side, there is a new law that says there, there's a new NLI program, new policy that says athletes can back out of their national letter of intents without penalties under certain circumstances. So for those of you who know, there is a commitment and then there is a signing. And obviously, when you give a verbal commitment, you can back out and decommit all you want. But once you sign, you signed your NLI in it, and you can't back out of that. Now, the new policy is that certain circumstances will allow athletes to back out of their national letters of intent. The certain circumstances are typically, according to ESPN, is, as far as I'm aware, has to do with coaches. So, for instance, if a coach is fired, a coach leaves for another job. 
things like that. So it's it's it, it could be a head coaching change, or it could I believe it could be if a program receives a punishment probation wise that we didn't know about. That is the policy on this. I think this is a good one. I think this is a very good policy. I think athletes sign to programs under certain conditions. And I think you should be able to back out of it if those conditions change. I think that way with contracts. I mean, that's how contracts are. The nature of contracts is there are certain conditions that you assume when you sign contracts that they change. I think ESPN should be willing to renegotiate its contract with the SEC because the SEC did that contract not knowing that Texas and Oklahoma were going to join. And I think there's an argument if the SEC took it to court for them to back out of the contract. Now, I don't blame ESPN at this moment because they're getting a sweet deal with the SEC with what they paid for. But I would argue that if if it went to court, I would take that into account that this contract was made before Texas and Oklahoma. The conditions change. The SEC could back out and demand more money if they want. I think the same is with national lesson intent. They're not immune to the coaches and the programs. Spoiler alert, guys. Players commit to coaches. Players commit to the possibilities of a program, not the program themselves. That's just... That's just how it goes. Mr. Jones, great point. Like Florida not wanting to pay NIL to the recruits they promised. Now that's a little bit tricky because technically NIL is not, it's not supposed to be used for recruiting. So I don't think you're going to be able to back out of your national letter of intent. I don't think you're going to be able to back out of your NIL. Excuse me, let me say this right. I don't think you're going to be able to back out of your NLI just because your NIL wasn't what it was. That's kind of a funny thing. But I will say that because technically NIL cannot be used during recruiting. But this is going to be intriguing because now when you start to see coaches getting fired, so for those who don't realize, this is why coaches get fired earlier. This is why they get hired earlier, all of that. So the early signing, the early, but where this is very intriguing is the early signing period is still in December. There are still instances, outstanding circumstances where coaches aren't hired until January or late December after the early, early signing period. You're going to see a wave of backouts of NLI from the early signing period based on coaching changes that happened at the end of December, which still happens a lot of times now. What this is really going to do, though, is this was already happening. Most of the coaching changes were happening at the end of November anyway. This is going to be magnified and exploded to a different degree because the early signing period, it coaches, will, athletic directors and administrators will be under a lot of pressure to find a coach before the early signing period now, which is in mid-December because they can't afford to wait because then coach players who signed would be able to back out of their national letters of intent. That's where this is going to change the most.